All right, we have a model sent in by Mason Real, who says, Hey, Folygon, I've been learning 3D modeling since January and ZBrush since the beginning of February. I feel like I've picked up a lot of helpful tips from your Gumroad tutorials, and I'd like to show off a bit of practice model that helped me get more acquainted with the Z Modeler brush and the Transpose tool. Questions for Z Critique. How would you approach sculpting the staff as it appears in the reference? And I've run into some issues with holes appearing in the mesh, and I can't seem to resolve it via closed holes slash dynamesh. What's your typical approach to fixing a busted mesh? I haven't seen any holes, but if I spot any while we're going, we'll try to look at different ways we can correct that, because there's all sorts of different types of holes. So we'll, we'll try to answer that as we go. Uh, the reference is by Jordi Villaverde. His work can be found on ArtStation, which you guys should absolutely check out. I've attached the reference for convenience sake of adding it to the spotlight. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. And kind regards, Mason. Awesome. Well, let's take a look, Mason. Uh, I think you maybe had some textures applied to some of this stuff, which is why they didn't come through. And the color is black. I'm not positive on that, but it doesn't matter. We'll be looking at just the sculptural form. And we'll take a look at the couple things that you pointed out. But I wanted to give kind of a general comment on feeling versus accuracy. So I don't know if you're trying to go for as accurate as possible here, but just some things that can help, I think, improve your sculpt in general. For example, down here in your boots, I think you have the, I think this is a really good example. You have this in your gloves as well. We'll kind of talk about those separately. But you have kind of a general, you have the general shape and gesture and feeling correct, but the overall accuracy into the uh, shape that we're seeing isn't quite there. And I think I think you can do this. You mentioned playing around with the Z modeler brush and kind of kind of learning learning the tool set there. But if we look at the shoes here, it comes down into a flat and then it's pretty much completely flat into right at this point where it goes one, two, three, right? So your shoes start to turn a little bit too early. And the shape starts to kind of lose its form a little bit, which is fine. It's not the end of the world. But what I would like to do is show you a little trick here. We'll see how well this works on these. But we'll do an auto groups. Got two boots. If I can get just one of them, that would be preferred. Don't need your subdivs for this because we're going to get rid of them. I'm going to use a slice curve brush. And what I'm going to do is use this slice curve brush to cut your geometry where these form breaks are. So it goes forward and then stops. So you have like this extra hit here. We don't want that. So I'm going to, here, I'm going to run a slice through here. And I'm going to run a slice through here and a slice through there. So now we have these three sliced areas. And now I'm going to run a Z remesh with keep groups on. And we'll play around with the poly count a little bit. But this back here is feeling a little weak as well. We kind of want to pull that out, get that feeling a little bit closer to the concept. It kind of comes down to a flat directly. Just kind of playing with that, cleaning it up. Also gets just a little bit wonky here in the shape. So we'll play around with that. And you know what, let's say that's good enough for now. So let's just do a quick Z remesh. We've created those slices. We have keep groups on, and this should help us out here. All right, so now we have these kind of nice, clean edge loops and slices through here. So what I would like you to play around with with the Z modeler brush is going through and deleting some edge loops in here. A little trick here is that we can actually do do do. I'm just going to delete all of these except where the shape breaks and changes direction. And we'll just cut this up even more. And all the way down to, we'll say, about there. That's fine. So then what I recommend doing is using something like some masking and rotating and just start getting this a little bit closer to what we're seeing in the shoe. So we got a one, two, three. Now we have a one, two, three. But in terms of thickness and how wide these are, obviously there's some changes that we want to make here. So I would say start like this with what I just did with the little Z remesher trick. You can probably even delete some extra edge loops in here where not necessary. It's just feeling 
uh, a little too dense. And essentially what you're gonna end up with is some geometry that's just much easier to manipulate. So I've used your, your mesh from the beginning. You might wanna consider poly modeling something like this. There are a lot of different options, but I think that'll help kind of get you started in the right direction. Now for the actual smoothing of these shapes, because once you subdivide them, see how it kind of rounds it out. What I recommend doing is going in with the Z modeler brush again and using a bevel edge loop. And just make a tight little edge in there. And you can make it as a tight or as loose as you want. I think we probably want it a little bit tighter than what we got there. So let's let's go here, we'll go a little bit tighter. And then all you have to do is click again and I'll redo that for you. So there we go, we're starting to get that shape a little bit closer and a little bit more accurate to what we're seeing. And the form is just much more clean and easier to manipulate. Less points, less polys, easier to work with. The other thing that I wanted to point out for you was thinking about uh, accuracy in terms of just like what we're seeing here in the legs. These feel much thicker than what we see in the 2D concept. So quick, quick fix for that could be just using your smooth brush or just de-inflating those a little bit. Just kind of play with that. It looks like these maybe have some thickness to them, which is probably something I wouldn't recommend for this type of geometry. So to correct that and get rid of any extra polys on the inside, I'm gonna use my move brush with back face masking. and just kind of close that up really quick and run a DynaMesh on this. You have a lot of polygons going on in this shape for something so so simple. Uh, so I would, I would definitely consider playing around with Z-Remesher more. It seems like you haven't really used that too much here. You've kind of gone from DynaMesh to uh, adding in some subdivision levels directly. I can see that you have Z-Remesher here, but again, just in some of these areas where it's a little bit more simple, I would say that's something that you can can consider. So that's starting to feel a bit, uh, a little bit closer. You could probably make those even more thin than I did. Uh, you got some curve in here that you know we're not seeing in the original concept. So I would say pay attention to that, as well as pay attention to this concept of thick to thin. So we can see that the arms actually get more thick as they come down the tube here. So the way you got this going. A quick way to do this just to show you we'll do the exact same thing the same method that we just looked at uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier to work with for me you probably need that geometry up there for some reason but just to show you this I'll Z remesh this really low I'm just trying to do this quick Z modeler brush got some weird density things going on there try that one more time it's not gonna play nice and then just delete a bunch of edge loops out of here that aren't necessary so the objective here, just for me, really quick, is to get something a little bit easier to work with. Sure, we'll say that's close enough. Create a quick mask, soften that mask, and then scale it using local symmetry so that it can go from thick to thin coming down the length of the arm. And in all honesty, for this shape, if I was to do this myself, what I would do, I would delete all edge loops just like that you just have a really simple tube so I can work on getting that thick to thin accurate at first and then once I have that most basic shape thinking about the primitive there then I would start adding in some additional edge loops so I can obviously create something like the bend if you are going to be bending the arms though I would say maybe tackle it in the same way that I did for the shoes so, so that you can get that really sharp elbow you got a lot of the same kind of problems going on uh, in terms of, I think, playing around with just getting a little bit more accurate to the concept. But in terms of the overall shape, I think you've done a pretty good job for only starting, you know, like you said, a couple months ago in 3D modeling. So kind of play around with those things, those few things, and I think that'll help you moving forward on this character. Then you mentioned uh, a couple things here. You said you've had some issues with holes appearing in your mesh. I didn't really see too many holes here, so it's kind of hard to address them. Um, I would say that's probably 
So for example, oh, nope, that's a separate mesh. There's a lot of different things that could cause holes and there's a lot of different ways to fix them. Uh, if we had a specific one here, it would be very nice for me to show you. So let's just grab your cape here. Let's just do this. So let's say you got a hole in your cape. Oh no, the hole in this geometry. That's awful, it is awful. Uh, this is just one example of a hole. I'm gonna turn on double, which is down in your tool display properties. And you can see that. So for this, for something like this, you could probably run a close holes operation and it would be just fine. But you mentioned that there were certain types of holes that wouldn't work with a close holes operation. For that, I would imagine, I, the only thing that I can imagine what happened was, uh, was essentially this. Let me see if I can do this. Um, auto groups. You probably had some geometry poking through to another side. So I have double turned on, and I recommend that you keep double turned on at all times. Uh, you have to turn it on for each individual subtool. So double lets you see backside facing polys. And I can flip my normals so that you can see what the inside of this geometry looks like. But if I turn on double, that allows me to see both sides. So you probably had something like this, and then at some point you you ran a dynamesh or, or did something and you ended up getting a, a hole in your mesh similar to what I have here. I'll just kind of push and pull and move some of this around. Try to make this as messy as possible. Let's see, we'll do this maybe. See how bad we get. Nope, not gonna give us more holes, that's fine. All right, so you probably had something like this, some kind of hole in your geometry that was giving you a lot of issues. And you can't run a close holes operation on something like this because there's no actual hole to close. Close holes closes holes in geometry that is open. Your geometry isn't really open. This is actually an edge, much like the edge is here on the bottom of your cape. It's the exact same idea. If we look at the cross section of your geometry, you can see why that is. So your geometry has some thickness going on here and where it is essentially coming and touching together there, that is where it is creating this opening. So this is why you can't run a close holes operation on something like this. So to close up geometry like this, there's a lot of different ways that you can tackle this. Um, I mean, really there's a ton. What I would sometimes do is grab like an IMM primitive brush and maybe insert a quick sphere and then patch up the hole, something like this really quick. You know, it's something pretty simple and you could patch that up and then, you know, run a Dynamesh and then start smoothing and cleaning that up and just spend some time cleaning that up and voila, there you go. You've, you've cleaned up your hole, you fixed your cape. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to use a move brush with masking or maybe with back face masking. Back face masking is located in your brush auto masking palette. Uh, sure, that's fine. Uh, so you can just use your move brush and start to push and pull this geometry every which way, making sure that you're closing up holes and then run a Dynamesh again and voila, we can start smoothing that up. So this kind of stuff here, again, that's where your geometry is connected and pinching together. So you can see that cross section. So we just need to you know, fill that in a little bit, give it some extra room to breathe. And there we go. We filled in that hole and closed that up. So hopefully that answers your question. There's uh, you know, a few different things that can cause holes and a, a couple different ways to solve different problems with holes. Uh, your, your other question was kind of about sculpting the staff here of this character. And I think there's a lot of different ways to go about doing that. I would probably just start with a tube of geometry, start blocking that out. Um, I probably wouldn't keep it super low poly, just stick with Dynamesh, and then after a while, try to remesh it so that we can get these really hard surface turns. Because this is a pretty crazy shape here. Another thing you could do is, I mean, there's always a billion ways to create everything. <laughs> Excuse me, you could uh, take the shape of the staff 
and create an alpha and you know extract it from a plane so you could start to get that that most basic shape you could use your spotlight tool as a reference bring down the opacity and I'll just grab one of your arms here and then start you know manipulating it and pushing it into the shape that you need there's you know it really it's just like the mood I'm in I guess I would say is how I would tackle this probably I would start with Dynamesh just grab a if I were to do this right now let's see let's grab an initialized cylinder so 212 quick cylinder Y and just start blocking out the most basic shape of that staff which happens to be a tube, a tube of geometry. We got some extra junk on our screen going on there. Let's see if I can clear that. So after you get the tube, and then just start adding in some extra resolution and sculpting it up further. You can do that with Dynamesh or just by using your Z modeler brush, adding in some extra edge loops, whatever floats your boat. And then again, we looked at that move uh, back face masking brush. Back face masking could be used here as well to add thickness in certain areas and thin out where not necessary in others. Another little thing that you can use with the move brush is the move AccuCurve function, which is under not brush auto masking, but under brush curve. And for those that didn't see earlier, here is where back face masking is under auto masking and there's AccuCurve. AccuCurve will allow you to pull out some sharp points a little, a little more resolution in there allow you to pull out some sharp points so if you have a nice break in your silhouette you can start to play around with this move brush to start getting the shape a little bit closer to what we're seeing here in our reference but I think that should help get you headed in the right direction. I actually believe I have a video where I sculpted a staff not too long ago for a witch character I was working on. So I will try to remember and link that below in the description for you. And hopefully that'll maybe give you some more ideas and techniques for how you can tackle this. But I think overall, like I said, I think you've done a really good job on the character for only starting a couple months ago. And I wish you luck pushing forward on this even further. He's really cool and uh, for those if I did not mention, Jordi Villaverde is the original concept artist. All right. Cool, man. Good luck.